Number four, Fishing the DMV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. We are only four. We only need four more people to sign up for the Patreon for us to hit our next major milestone for $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Senkos or a jackhammer chatterbait. All Patreon supporters will receive 5% off their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle, 20% off their orders to Shallow Water Fishing Adventures Tackle, 10% off their orders to Tiger Crankbaits, 10% off their orders to Catoctin Rods. They'll also gain access to our private Facebook group community, private members content only, and of course, our monthly giveaways. Again, we are so close to hitting this next major milestone. If you would like more information, check the link in the episode description. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia, and Shallow Water Fishing Adventures Baits, online, located in Mount Airy, Maryland. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to this last minute live stream to kind of celebrate the end of the 4th of July weekend. So I wanted to kind of get a full in-depth Potomac River fishing report with Jeff Green Shallow Water Fishing Adventures. We have one comment on Instagram that says, what is that? Well, this is a live stream uh, drowning uh, kittens FPV. Great name. Absolutely love that where we're going to be doing a kind of a Q&A with a fishing guide from the Upper Potomac River. Upper Potomac, if you guys don't know, is the non-tidal portion of the river from Great Falls, the break line above DC, all the way up through Paw Paw, West Virginia, so on and so forth to Little New Orleans. If you guys are not a Patreon member, definitely go over there and check it out. We are only four Patreon subscribers. I mean, four away from our next major milestone where we're going to throw a massive Patreon-only meeting where we're going to have tons of guides to answer questions. Food is going to be completely paid for. It's completely free to any Patreon supporter. Head on over there and sign up. We only need four more to make that happen. And we are doing a photo contest giveaway for the 4th of July weekend. That will be announced Monday evening before Monday Night Live, of course. And we'll have a couple of winners as we always do. And your pictures will be also the winning pictures will be pushed out on all of our social media handles. Now, you guys don't want to hear from me. I hope everyone had a fun weekend. No one blew off all their fingers. Everyone ends the week with the same amount of digits that they started with, which is hopefully 10 total. Without further ado, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Jeff of Shallow Water Fishing Adventures is on the show. Jeff, how are you doing? Jeff, I cannot hear you. Your mic is muted. Man, I hate there that. we go. Mics are terrible. How are you doing? Good, man. Good. It's been, it's been a hot one out there. I can tell you it's, that. It's been insane. I saw some of your footage on the water. It looks like the river's kind of shallow right now. Yeah, it's real. It's, it's real shallow. It's real low. It's, uh, it's, um, I mean, it's about as low as it gets in the summertime. Um, you know, you gotta be real careful out there. You gotta, um, uh, you gotta go early, leave early or go late and leave late, you know, when you fish. So it's, um, it's it's still fun, but it's uh it's starting to seem like work. You know? How how what is the water temperature right now averaging? It's in the mid to upper eighties. That's freaking hot. Yeah. That's really hot. Yep. With that said, when you're saying like leaving early, getting out late, all that stuff. <laughs> What is the best time to be out on the water? Is it like after 4 p.m., you know, before 5 a.m.? Yeah, what is your... It's going to probably be about four hours before it gets dark and then four hours, um, the first four hours of light. Mm, okay. So somewhere around um, 5.30, 5.45 till about um, 9, 10 o'clock. And then I sometime have... around 4.30, 5 till about once it get dark around nine, depending on the, um, you know, if there's Roughly. a cloudy or not. So, yeah. What's the river running right now? Uh, you mean, uh, level Flow rate. wise? Yeah. Um, right around a foot at uh point of rocks. That's shallow. So it's like two, nine, two, eight, two, nine. And, um, I haven't looked at the gauge since this. Uh, since below this the Monocacy? What'd you say? You said it's about two feet below the Monocacy. 
yeah, in Edwards Ferry, it's about two, two, eight, two, nine. And then up at Point of Rocks, it's right around, around a foot. So, it, it's really insane when you're talking about water that that's it's that deep. And, and then, guys, for you guys who don't know, Edwards Ferry is located like below Wheatleysburg. It's below White's Ferry. Uh, and, and the reason I say the Monocacy, I brought that up, is is really for that portion of the river. The Monocacy is the major tributary, and so you need to understand that if you're fishing this river, that hey, the water color above the Monocacy it might be completely different to where the Monocacy dumps in. Also the flow rate and the level of the water will be completely different if you go above the Monocacy versus below the Monocacy. That's just a one little factor to kind of keep in mind for people if this is their first time on the river. Yeah. I'm not, going, it, I'm not I haven't been fishing out of Monocacy. It'd be real hard to get your boat out of there. Yeah, yeah. And I'm talking about fishing in Monocacy, just about how the water dumping in from the Monocacy will affect the river. Yeah, it's, um, I think that, that water looks pretty good. But the uh, water down below um, Harper's Ferry is uh, it's it's pretty green right now. Some type of algae bloom in it, but that that's natural for uh, for weather we're having. And um, eventually it'll it'll go away. We got Ray Sar X seventy two says early enough to beat the inflatable navy to the boat ramp. Yeah, this is uh, if you fish the Upper Potomac or the Shenandoah, this is floater season. <laughs> <laughs> for sure yeah they were they were out in full force today down below um uh, dam three hey, have you ever snagged one no no i stay away from them we got brandon we got brandon how brandon says today i was out there and saw low 90 water temps and this is um something i want to bring up too about the water temps and stuff be very cautious of that with your fish. If you catch one, weigh it. If you're fishing a tournament, I know there's a kayak tournament that I'm a part of in two weeks, I think, at this point. You know, just be very conscious about getting those fish back into the water as quick as possible because it is insanely hot right now. Um, pattern wise, that I've been seeing, I, I got I got out to practice a little bit. Is just really just the shade, and then early and late. I mean, this is not. This is not rocket science season, generally speaking, when it comes to catching smallmouth about what you need to do. If you are fishing the slower portions of the river, in my opinion, it's kind of just your duh patterns. And then if you're fishing up towards Point of Rocks or any rapids where you get true riffles, they're going to be staging just where you think they're on the, like on the Shenandoah River. Same, same thing. Um, Jeff, this time of year, where do you... How shallow do you feel comfortable running? Are you running up to the Brunswick Point of Rocks area? Or are you staying below that? No, I'll stay below that, and then um, I'll run. Um, I'll run up above the Monocacy River a little ways, and then uh, I'll go further north. And then, if I feel like the water's too low in the Potomac, I'll go to the Susquehanna. And I fish an area. I fish. There's areas on the Susquehanna that fish in low water. I bet that's actually that's actually a really good idea, especially with where you live, to be able to kind of like bounce between the two. Yeah. Um, what boat ramps are closed right now? Just for all the people that are fishing kayak tournaments coming up, isn't is Edwards Ferry closed, or is there another one down below there that's closed? No, Edwards Ferry is closed. Edwards Ferry is closed. I saw that two days ago. Okay. On the water, it's still closed in all its glory from a year ago. I mean, it looks like they have a backhoe there, and that's about it. I didn't get up too close to it. Why does it take them so freaking long to do this? I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know um, why it's taking so long. It it didn't, uh, or, or, you know, the other boat ramp that was closed is open back up. Um, Dargan? Dargan, yeah. But Edwards Ferry, you know, the water's real low below there going towards um seneca mm -hmm. there's a um there's a stretch of river just below uh edwards ferry that water can't even be a foot deep it's all the way across too i, I i'm gonna try to bring this up at the next black bass association meeting about this specifically to see if there's anything we can do um because this is something I didn't know either, that you really can't keep fishing alive well. I think it's below either the Monocacy or White's Ferry, which is kind of like very Susquehanna-ish. Um, 
and I don't understand the reasoning for that law. And I should know that because being on the board of the Black Bass Association, but that has never been brought up in any conversation about that, which is really interesting to me. Uh, we got Brian Reed. Brian says, Edwards is never going to reopen. That is a positive attitude, sir. I love that vibe. I really do. Hey, uh, is that Brian Reed? Yep, that's Brian Reed. No, it'll open up. Uh, let's see. It'll open, we up got... next, um, it'll open up next Christmas or something. Yeah. <laughs> When no one will need it. Uh, I launched from Landers. I, Landers? Flanders or Landers? Landers. I launched from Landers on Saturday. I don't think you can get up to Brunswick from there south. Yeah, I don't. I, I, okay, well, you're talking kayak well, or jet you, boat. Could you? Maybe. Would you? Do you want to? No. That's true. I, mean, I, I guess you have some of these like rock proof boats that are $100,000 that maybe you could probably bounce through there, but yeah. Is it really worth it? Uh, zombie rider, should you not fish bass if the water is 90 feet? Oh, 90 degrees. My apologies. Yeah, like, so you can catch and release. Catch and release, yeah. hey, but do, know, that, that, do not put them in a live well. You bass, you know, if, you, if you've ever fished Lake Anna on the private side, um, this time of year, regardless of uh, usually uh, what the weather's like, that water's near 90 degrees to begin with. Mm-hmm. And those people have no problem catching those fish and letting them go. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just get them back in the water really quickly. And it, and again, it depends on when was the 90 degree water temperature taken? Are you saying at one o'clock at the hardest part of the day and it's 200 degrees? Okay, you have a great argument there. Are you getting out at 5 a.m. before the sun crests and the water is a little bit cooler, the air temperature is cooler? You're hooking them and putting them right back. Like I, I think there's no hard and fast rule for that. I, I, I do think a... A potential hard and fast rule you probably shouldn't be putting them in the live well or putting them or taking them out of the water for any expanse of time if it's over 90 degrees 100 percent believe that uh let's see uh brandon how you could walk across most of the places i went today brandon how was the fishing i saw some of the posts you did on the patreon group page it looked like i mean you caught some it's just fr from the people i've talked to for this because there's a big kayak tournament jeff going on in two weeks big kayak tournament on the upper potomac uh -huh. it seems like I think everyone's going to catch smallmouth. This is going to be a absolute smallmouth blowout. People will catch a lot of keeper smallmouth. It's finding those 18 inches. Those 18 inch plus smallmouth are going to be the golden globes. Um, I think it's going to probably be one. I'm going to save that for the oh, end of the show where I think it's probably going to be one. You can, hey, you can still catch 20 inch fish on the Potomac River this time of year. Oh, I 100% I believe that. It's who's going to catch five of them. Yeah. Um, I think there's going to be a bunch of 20 inches caught. It's just whether or not it's one person that catches them or if it's spread out. Like I, I know Chun probably already has 180 inches, you know, his back pocket set. Chun, I don't know if you're listening to this. I love you, bud. He'll probably win this thing again. Um, there's, I mean, I, I, I'll say it. I'll say it. I'll say where I think it's going to be one. It's, it's areas that I don't know familiar and I got to practice there more. Um, what area? I'm thinking it's going to be it from... Huh? Give it up. I'm giving it up. I'm giving it up. I think it's going to be one from above, from Brunswick up, or it's going to be one from Algonquian down, where you got a lot of super shallow, fast water, where it's just super kayaky, if that makes sense. Like, really, really kayaky place, a lot of wading. Can you fish the below dam, too? Yes, you can fish below dam too, unless somebody in the comment section tells me you're not allowed to. Probably win it there. Down below dam that, too. Yeah. That uh, water's I mean, moving good. And if you guys want to know where below dam two is, guys, it's like down here. It's a it's across from Seneca Creek. Riley's Boom. Lock. Or it's down below Seneca Creek and Riley's Lock. Yeah, and I'm gonna be practicing down here uh, one of these days coming up. Um, I mean, White's Ferry areas got good ones. It's just they're not as concentrated up in that stretch. You don't have those, what I call the primary smallmouth setups like the Shenan The Shenandoah is very classical, riffle, pull, riffle, pull, riffle, pull, and so you kind of know where they're going to set up. the The big stretch from here, which would be, let me flip this over here. Do 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 do. Sorry, guys. Where is it? Where's the terrain? There's a Tehran. There we go. Okay, sorry. So the big section, I think, really from Point of Rocks down to like Leesburg area, I think there's a ton of massive fish in there. 
it's just going to be a little bit harder to find them. Personal opinion. I could absolutely be wrong about that. I think they're there. You just got to be able to cover more water. So if you have like a jet boat, you can you can traverse the distances to get to the different schools of fish. But if you have a kayak, I feel like you're kind of like set. If you launch from Point of Rocks, Leesburg, you got to figure a pod of them and just stay on them because the distances are so massive. Unless, you know, you have like you know, two or three torpedo batteries. Again, I could be completely wrong. I'm just an idiot on YouTube. But that's my thought where if you get from the Brunswick area up or down below Leesburg, I feel like it's a little bit easier to burn through a bunch of water. Uh, let's see. Brandon says, uh, not terrible. Just trying to navigate around is a pain in the ass. I agree with that, boss. This is when I really wish I had an inflatable kayak by um, um, Innovative Sportsman. Uh, but I believe he's like backlogged for the next 10 years on kayaks, but I could be wrong. Uh, Brandon said, if I had to guess low 80 inch bag will win. Ah, dude, Brandon, you really think it's going to be low 80s? I, I don't, John, I see you, I see your eye roll in the comment section. Do you really think it's going to take low 80 inches? I, I think there's going to be a 90 inch bag. I think the river's fishing really good. I feel like it's going to fish good. It's probably going to be you that catches it, but I, I think it's going to fish really good. Uh, let's see, uh, Jeff, we got Greg Hornick. Hey, Greg, how you doing, boss? Uh, uh, got a question for Jeff. Jeff, do you change sure. your normal Jeff? Do you change your normal baits, your normal baits or tactics with the current water conditions? No, I'm still using plastics. I'm using plastics and uh, I'm using uh, uh, jig heads that are sixteenth ounce to an eighth ounce. I mm. prefer sixteenth and three thirty second. And um, I'm using small baits and fishing them real slow. That's what I'm doing. There you go. And then um, also, uh, if you get out early enough, you can catch them on topwater baits. Yeah, and that's something that's interesting for the kayak tournament. If they would let us start at 5 a.m. or 5.30, like lines in at 5.30, I think the weights would go up. You know, I think if, if it's lines in at 6.30, I think that's going to really hamper that 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 morning bite. But I think the morning bite might last a little bit longer. You know, who knows? It. You know, we got, Ch ooh, we got a good one here by, uh, we got, we got one by the master, the Potomac master here. Uh, if it doesn't rain 80 or less, oh, oh, he's got a hot take. He's, he, he's camping it down. He wants to say it's only going to take 10 inches to win. And then when he blows a hundred on us, like it's just going to be like, yeah, just a bigger, bigger shock to us poor mortals. Um, yet the river's low, the river's clear. It's river's hot. They are really keying in and on on small bait fish. They're moving around a lot. It seems like on the river right now, it's it's low, not a lot of current, and a lot of the water just seems stagnant. You got to find something that's a little bit different. You can uh, you can still catch them. Um, you someone's gonna catch one that's twenty one inches long out there. Oh, I I believe so. It's will it just be one twenty inch and a bunch of twelves, or is it gonna be like all twenty inch fish? Like what what do you think? No, no, I think they'll be like 16 and 17 inch fish and then a couple 20 inch fish. Oh, damn. Jeff's so how, really pumping it. How's this, um, how's this thing work? Is it one day? One, one day, fish? your best five fish lengthwise. Oh, really? One, yep. One day, your best five fish, how long they are. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. You know, it's, it's all going to depend on the situa situation that you have there um, that day. W when is it? Uh, I think the tournament is, I should know this, right? Uh, the 20th, 20th? July 20th. Yeah. There's going to be about 200 oh, kayaks on the river happen between now and then, you know, it could rain. Uh, it could rain a lot between now and then at some point. That'd be interesting to see what that does to the river. That's why I'm afraid. And this is why like, uh, a, a friend of mine that's in the comment section says he doesn't like to practice a lot. And I actually kind of agree that that's probably correct because I've practiced for this thing. And I feel like that's going to cloud my judgment on, on how I do in the tournament. Well, if conditions change, if the water goes up, if you're fishing the water at one, at one foot, and then you go out there um, and it's three feet, the fish are going to be in a different place. You know, are you saying if it there rains a, a lot, it, the fish will move? Yeah, they're going to move. Yeah. Yeah. Don't so I think um, you're going to have to uh, play it by ear. I think that's the best bet is go out there and just fish it the day you get there. You know? 
We got a good question here by uh, Everett Garner. Everett Garner, what type of baits are working best on the Potomac right now? And again, Everett, we're talking about the sh the the non-tidal portion of the Potomac, which is the smallmouth country, shallow, rocky, just to make sure that we're talking about that. Um, yeah, I mean, Jeff, I mean, if you want to give your baits, what, what baits have you been throwing right now that have been working the best? The tickler, baby. God bless America. The the tickler. And the... um. What else has been working? The Ned's been working. The Tickler. Um, Three-inch Cinco's. But you have to keep them on lightweight. Um, you could try a um, wacky rig. Uh, in this real low water, if, if you're um, in a part of the river, that's if it, if it clears up, throw a weightless Cinco's. You know, five-inch uh, Cinco's. And throw them out as far away from as you can. And I think... Uh, you'll find success with that stuff. Yeah. And, and I think honestly, it, it's, it's, it's covering water. It's fine. It's a wacky rig. Worm is extremely good. I like throwing a wacky rig, um, super natural colors on your, on your wacky rig. A super light Ned rig will work good too. Again, cause that's just, I'm biased. That's what I like. I know some guys are, are, are yakking them on tubes. Uh, top water is extremely hot. If you have the patience for that, if the Don't, water's up high, when you guys fish spinner baits, Spinner baits are good. Um, top water wise, you, you gotta you gotta downsize your top water baits. Don't do the blueback herring like nine inch like wake, walking baits. The BFS little top waters or poppers are good. Um, uh, whopper ploppers, buzz baits, things like that. It just whichever one you personally like to throw. Uh, we got Racer here again. Racer says uh, one of the guys I talked with on Saturday caught an eighteen and nineteen inch there at Lander. Uh, I watched him catch the 19 all on a white 75 whopper plopper. He was getting a ton of short strikes, though. Yeah, the whopper plopper, dude, it's a great bait. Um, and a buzz bait, which is basically the weedless version of it. It, it. it depends. Are you just bomb casting or are you fishing something specifically? And this is why I ask. If you're making a bomb cast, I think go with a whopper plopper. If you are trying to hit like low hanging wood or like shade lines, I still think being able to skip a buzz bait or something like that where you can get it back up in there and not going to snag is also a good thing to try too. Just to give them a different look. Um, which What what whopper plopper size, Jeff, do you generally like? The um, From the 90 down. 90 down. And then what's that? There's one, there's a 9, and then there's, there's a... What's the one below the 90? 70 something? 75? Is it? Yeah, yeah, there's a 75, which is what... what and then what, there's uh, one below that that works. Which is like a freaking peanut. Yeah, it works uh, pretty good. That's like a teeny torpedo. But yeah, go with bone white. Uh, the other thing that worked really good for me was a... I'm going to give up some juice here. Um, I think I, I posted it on Patreon, the exact bait. I think I posted on Patreon. I'm going to post that on my Patreon page right now. The exact bait that I was using that I was catching them on. Uh-huh. Let me throw that right here. So as you guys speak, this is about to happen right here just for you Patreon supporters. This is why you need to get over to the Patreon group. Sign up for Patreon. You become a member of the private Facebook group to see all the cool baits and stuff that we have. All right, boom. So this is the deal. Sorry, I'm trying to text and talk which is insanely actually hard for me, which you think it wouldn't be because this is kind of what I do for a living. All right, perfect. All right, that has been just uploaded to the Patreon group page. Don't forget about the Z. Yep. And then we got uh, we got Cliff Bennett. Cliff Bennett says, don't forget about the Z-Man Toad. The Z-Man Toad is really good as well. Again, I think it's that white ore on top of the water burning across. That can be extremely good, but you just have to deal with the short strikes and you have to be committed to something like that. Um, well, you gotta we got the short strikes up with plastic baits. Yes. And then that was kind of like the swim bait that I was catching them on. I just dropped on the Patreon Facebook group. So if you guys are not a member of Patreon, go over there. That's where I give up more of the juice and stuff is just to the, the Patreon members first, but throwing a tiny swim bait weightless. This is, this has been key for me in so many tournaments in kayak fishing this year, which I, that was not on my bingo card when I started this year. Uh, get yourself a screw lot, a screw lock. Finesse Gamagatsu screw lock hook. Again, I'm going to be posting that on Patreon too. And then you're going to be putting that with a 2.8 to a, you know, 3 to 9.8 swim bait 
completely weedless and weightless. You can use that as a top water lure. You can skip it, or you could slow it down and let it be subsurface. And what's nice about that is if you get the short strike, and this happened when I went practicing, when you kill it, it'll sink and they'll come back and they'll, they'll probably pick it up as well. So that's another re really, really good bait that you could be throwing. Uh, let's see. And I think I already did this. Oh, no, we got ch we got this one. Uh, we got Mr. Lee Wells, a Patreon supporter. Uh, agree with Chun. No rain. Going to have a smaller bag Saturday. Bite was tough. Yeah, and, and Lee, Lee, shout out to Lee. Lee and um, Brandon, you guys have been practicing like, what, seven days a week? Like, you guys have been putting your freaking time in for this event. Uh, do you think, and weight-wise, do you think right now a 17-pound bag is out of the question? A 16-pound bag, Jeff? 16-pound bag in one day? Yeah, do, do you think five for 16 pounds is... is Doable on the river right now or hard? I think it might be hard. I'm thinking like I'm thinking like twelve pounds. So twelve pounds divided by five fish would be a pounds. two. Yeah, so that would be a two point four pound average. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's you think about really, 12 that'd, pounds? Be a, that'd be a really I, that'd be a that'd be a hard that'd be hard to beat if you ended up that way. Oh, I think it'd be extremely hard hard to beat. So thirteen pounds. We got thirteen pounds. We we got Chun saying it's just going to be in. It's going to be hard too. Yeah, and that, that could be too. Yeah, yeah. I could have just found something fun. I don't know. Um, I think there's definitely a lot. I think there's going to be more twenty inch fish caught in this event than the Shenandoah event. That is my Thomas Aaron's prediction right now. I just think the Potomac is fishing better even in this terrible time of year than the Shenandoah was. Uh, and again, I think the problem with that is we were fishing during like a freaking, you know, class three hurricane or whatever it was. So I could be wrong. I could just be an idiot on YouTube. I just think the river is still, even though the conditions are tough, I think it's still going to have a bunch of 20 inch fish caught. No doubt. I think the biggest will be 20 to 21, uh, which probably is not going to break. If I'm not mistaken, it's not going to break the Shenandoah, uh, big fish of the tournament. I just think there's going to be more of them caught. Uh, let's see. We got uh, oh, we got another Patreon. Here we go. Uh, we got smallmouth surgeon. We got a question for Jeff. Hey Jeff, do you fish Algonquin at all? Been slow for me lately. Yeah, I fish there. I fish down there. It depends. Um, it, de it depends on. Um, I go down there every now and then. I'll take people down there and and um, and when I don't have trips, I'll go down there and, and check it out. I got there's a few areas down there I like to fish. I mean, I fish all the way down the dam too. So yeah, um, but I would assume it'd be hard. It'd be hard to uh, fish down there right now with the current conditions. Yeah. So uh, the the key is, guys, is to really, really downsize right now. They they are keying on tinier bait. This this time of year, I could be completely wrong. Again, I keep saying this. I'm just an idiot on YouTube. I'm just going with my life experience and people I've talked to. Unlike the Susquehanna, where they key on a lot bigger bait size. The Potomac and the Shenandoah, they generally will key in on smaller stuff. You're talking, I mean, what did I write down here? Like two to three inches, like something that small. So go with your Bitsy swim baits. Go with a BFS jerk baits. Well, you got um, you to gotta remember, too. You remember that Bassmasters Classic that was in the early 2000s up in Pittsburgh? The Battle three of rivers? Three Rivers? Yeah. Remember how, uh, what, was the, what was the bag limit, the daily bag limit on that? or the biggest it was like three 12 pounds, pounds 12 pounds but that was like a mega bag but yeah i are i don't the river's not going to fish that bad it's just not it's i will i will defend the potomac river it's gonna be better than pittsburgh in the ohio river for sure um it, it's just it's just not going to be like 20 pounds each person the i will show this bait off here uh everett to your question here i have this in the boat right now i i should have shared it i'll take a picture of all the baits that i caught them on and I'll send it on the Patreon page, but um, the X of uh, 70 BFS jerk bait by Mega Bass, absolutely freaking a killer. I love that. Uh, there's also an 80 version that I used as well. It it just matches the hatch absolutely so well. And then one other key with that that I was doing differently when I was practicing is I wasn't jerking it. I was just swimming it, just casting it out and swimming it back as fast as I can, or. Swimming it back to where it wasn't burning out and rotating up, 
Again, it's a two inch jerk bait, but it was really matching all the forwards that we were keying in on. Yeah, um, and that was the same thing I was doing with my netting rig. Yeah. Ultralight tackle would be a good idea to have with you. Ultralight, make the bomb cast. Oh, you know what uh, other um, lure I forgot to tell you? The other lure that was working and it has been working in these conditions are the um, rapple of floating men minnows. Mm. The, uh, do, you have a couple, do you have a couple to show off to the camera? Yeah, I have them somewhere. Hold on. Let me oh, grab boy. one. He is going to get us the goods. We got Travis in the... Hey, Travis, what up, bud? Yeah, long cast. Long casts are going to be big. I know that's what Travis would say. He should, like, make long casts. Because that, that's, uh, that's, his, that's his jam. Yeah, I wish... Um... Whatever happened to Tackle Warehouse? Ooh. Tackle Warehouse, now, their overnight stuff sucks. I tried to overnight some stuff that no one had around for the... the um, the Sleeters Lake Battle of Five Lake event. They're and in California. I, I, That's what's wrong with them. No, but there I did overnight. Is. Ooh. There she is. Not this color, though. Black and silver was working for me. How big right? is that? That's It's the F7. It's like uh, three inches, a little bit bigger than three inches. Dude, that's awesome. It's under four. Let me see. I've been catching fish with this for uh, decades, man. That is the absolute deal. That sucker's three inches. Mm. You're going to have to have a light tackle to throw that, though. You know? But um, they were hitting this thing, too. It's kind of like a crankbait, but um, you know, it only dives down about two feet or three feet. And uh, for whatever reason, they love that thing. That color is unique too. I like that color. It's a, a, a perch color. Yeah, this would probably work too if you gave it a chance. But that black and silver, that uh, just the original uh, black, uh, like like this black top, and then the bottom the belly of it's silver. You can't beat that thing, man. Mm -mm. And I find that if you have three of these, you buy three of these at like um, Bass Pro or something like that. And um, there'll be one out of the three that catches fish more than the other two. Really? Yeah, because there, there's got to be like a slight difference. I mean, just barely, bar barely a difference, but there's a slight difference in one versus the other. And I think uh, that's what the smallmouth will key in on. You know, it moves maybe a little bit different through the water. Just, just, a, just a tiny bit. Is this right now the hardest time of year? Yeah. As of right now, unfortunately, yeah. Uh, last year it wasn't. Why? It was cooler. Mm. Uh, summer wasn't this hot last year. I I agree with that. Summer it was not. It's just you know it's just a it's just a hot summer. We haven't had a summer like this in a while. Yeah, I'm trying to think about the, the, the last time it was like this. Like, it was this freaking hot. I think it's, it's been, been a while, while man. It's because it's it's every day. You know? Every single day. I mean, I remember, like, last year. Like, yeah, like, it was... It was, and it was relatively cool this whole year to begin with before the, the heat got cranked up to 11. And you combine the heat with the drought that we're in where there's just no rain. And I, I don't... I like. I don't know like how much I feel like it, the problem is if we get a flash flood event where it's like a shit ton of rain, like how much rain can the river handle, especially for this tournament, you know? It can't handle much. It'll go brown in a second. You think so? Hey, here's another yeah, here's here's another uh small bait that might work. The beetle spin. Oh. There you go. This works too. Just depends on what day. This will work. This will catch the heck out of them. You ever used a beetle spin? I've used a Panther Martin this past week when I went practicing, and I caught the shit out of them, but they were not the right size. Who here in the comment section has used a Panther freaking Martin? That is old school shit, dude. And tell you what, I threw it on my BFS setup, my Phoenix uh, like medium light with my Shimano, and guess what? I destroyed my fluorocarbon because I forgot to put a swivel on that thing. 
just destroyed all the land on my reel. But it was so much fun chucking that little like half ounce uh, Panther Martin around. And uh, dude, I caught some big Google, Google goggle eye rock bass. They were called rock bass, but that that was a lot of that was a lot of fun. Probably wasted a lot of time practicing, but it was still fun. Uh, beetle spin. Ooh, we got to go in from Bri from Brian Reed here. Uh, Brian says uh, beetle spin paired with the Berkeley Gulp Minnow is my go to upper uh, deadly combo. I adore Berkeley Gulp. Please sponsor me. I will take your money or your product. I don't care. I love Gulp. The only issue I have with Gulp is just it comes off the hook so easily, man. Like you, you got to super glue it. You have to screw lock it. Something like that. Um, we got we got Andrew. Uh, uh, Andrew oh, is in here. the chat. Hey, hey, this one's for Brian. Um, Brian Reed. There you go. Hold on. There, there it is. is. The Gulp Minnow in all its glory. Look at that thing. Yep. How heavy oh, is that hey. head? That that's an eighth ounce. Eighth ounce. Okay. Eighth ounce, and then hey, here's a quarter ounce. Is that a quarter? Quarter ounce. Um, you ever heard of a Joe's fly inline spinner? Oh, okay. Yeah. Like a Panther Martin. In the summertime, yeah. these catch, uh, these catch smallmouth too. Just an idea. I like them. I do. I, I told like, uh, do I have any I of my like stuff them here? Too. They're in, um, they're, uh, they're made in West Virginia. I got my frog box. I got my crankbait box. That's about it. Okay. Um. Oh, here we go. Uh, the the four inch Cinco with with purple or gold flake, absolutely killing. I I've had success with this too. I don't know why that's not showing up on my camera. Come on, show up, dude. Huh? I think my uh, that's weird. Anyway, so that's showing up really good right now. And I'll show these off in a minute once I get my camera figured out there. And then we have Andrew with the, uh, that's all I use is BFS. I do love BFS. I love me some BFS, especially if you're doing close and personal, you're casting to like lay downs and things like that. It's really nice to have that BFS set up there. Hey, Andrew it's just was easier. with me when, um, when we caught that, uh, caught that, um, Andrew Styles. he was with me when, um, when we caught that giant muskie a couple, uh, what was it a, su a couple summers ago? Oh, no kidding. That's he awesome. He was just showing that four inch Cinco. We caught it on the four inch Cinco. Dude, that's freaking that's, awesome. Um, that's the Andrew. That's the Andrew Styles. What's up, Andrew? And Andrew says this. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we have a comment from Instagram. We have. There we go. Jay Gonkester. Uh. In one of your Instagram videos recently, you posted a type of jig head. What is the best bait to throw on that head? But I don't know which. Yeah, he's talking to you. You're talking to I guess me? What'd you say? I think he's talking. He's asking what one of the videos you posted last week about the uh, jig heads. Yep. What's your favorite bait to put on that jig head? Um, Is he talking about the finesse? I'm pretty sure that's what he's talking about. He's talking about one of these things. Yes. Sam? Yeah. Uh, the um, I like using a, a TRD Ned rig. Um, any type of Ned rig, like Plastisol Ned rig too, not just the uh, uh, Z-Man stuff. And the Z-Man Tickler, I like using on it. That's what I throw on it. There you have it, guys. And that's problem uh, solved. Pretty, oh, there's uh, there's also a few other baits, I, uh, plastic baits I like um, on it. Uh, one would be, um, you guys ever heard of a uh, a bullet bait? No. It's like a net rig, but it's tapered at the end. Hmm. That's a, a, a kind of looks like a carrot stick, but it's real fat. Wait, that's do you got really one? Bait. Yeah, I, I do. Where do I have? Yeah, I have one. Let me get it. Hold on. Yeah, I gotta see this thing now because, like, I like. Huh? Oh, this actually kind of sounds pretty interesting. I got it. I mean, anyone else think like when he was talking about that, you're like, huh? I actually really need to know what the heck this thing is. I 
I'm also here just ordering random crap from Tackle Warehouse that actually looks interesting. So if you guys really want to know what I'm doing on my other screen right now, it's looking at some baits that I think I want to practice with right now. It's the, uh, let's see, this is the, uh, the, the G crack Sapaku, the G pack Sapaku, uh, but it's three inches. So I was looking at this thing. It's it's three point right. seven inches long, which looks perfect. Slow sink. That looks like the deal, honestly. I mean, you could do treble hooks, which I think I might the be the thing. One. Oh boy! <laughs> there it is. You see it? That thing's pretty th thick, actually. Yeah. Here, let me see if I have a. Uh, yeah, here. I'll put it on a jig head. These are uh, these are great baits. I'm gonna I'm probably gonna start selling these this winter. These are really good winter baits. Why do you think Sam? so? Well, number one, they skip real well. So in the winter time, mm. when you're um, when you're fishing the shorelines near eddies and there's trees hanging over in certain areas, you can get up in there. Or uh, these work real well. Uh, in flooded areas where you have to throw up in the tunnels and stuff like that. Okay. They, they really like them. So I know, I, I know it's not super fantastic. Uh, um, you know, pushing technology type thing, but this thing, so this thing works really well. How many, um, and then, we, Oh, we got a good question here by, An or statement by Andrew. Uh, my favorite is still a three inch Senko on a Charlie Brewer head because of you. Yeah. No, hundred yeah. percent. Je Jeff is making just conversions right now. Yeah. The Charlie Brewer slider heads just evil. It's absolutely evil with that, uh, with a, a three inch stick bait or Senko, whatever brand you're using the yums. Yeah. That's, that's hard to beat in the summertime. Green pumpkin colored one, or if the water's all, um, real off colored, a, um, black one oh dude you can't beat that it's absolutely the 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 best yeah. absolute the best but i'm telling you uh these uh, these baits right here that's a killer man i know people are like oh well it doesn't look much different than uh doesn't look much different than that but they like it man so we got Brian says Jeff convinced me on the slider head and never looked back. Now, there you go. Uh, I tried a chatterbait yeah. this week and I also tried a swim jig. Didn't get a lot of bites on it. I, I just think I was probably not you fishing it right. I wasn't in the right spot. Yeah, put like good, I, um, put a good uh, uh, your favorite um, swim bait on the back of it. Yeah, I, I'm gonna try it again. It. I'm gonna try it downsize a, a little water. bit more. And um, the water's off colored, and it's a little bit sneakier than a um, than a chatterbait. You know, it's basically hmm. the same thing, but it just doesn't have the uh, blade on it. You know. Okay, I'll we're, give it a try. Talk about a swim jig, right? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, I, I, I was talking about swim jig and how I need to. I wasn't having success with it, but I need to continue fishing it to see if I can get them to hit it because. I just like the hookup percentage with a swim jig that when you get them, you get them. You don't have to mess around with them too much swim in the boat versus travel hook baits. Yeah. There's times to use them. They work real well. They like that no. skirt flaring. Oh, hundred percent dude. Like I, that's what I, I caught all of my fish pretty much on a swim jig and a chatter bait in the Shenandoah event, minus the one I was able to catch on a glide bait, which I'm still kicking myself that I locked a glide bait in my head that long. Uh, we got, on Instagram, I really wish Instagram would let me share comments. I can't, so I'm going to try so hard to say your name. Nutso202. Nutso202. Okay. N-U-T-S-O-202. Nutso202. Where, where, where in the city best catfish spot? So where in the city is the best catfish spot? Um... The Reagan National Airport's a really good place. That whole walkway through there is really good. What's if you're talking about the Upper Potomac? What's nice about the Upper Potomac is you have the Cindo Canal that runs basically all the way up the river on the Maryland side. Pick a part of the bike path there. It goes 100. It goes over 180 miles. Yeah, like I mean, you, uh, 
people don't do that enough. And the power move is if you get your setup to where you can just hop on the bike path and just bike or drive or whatever, you can hit so many places uh, for your catfish spots. And then just look for the deep bends. Uh, we got we got the man, the myth, the legend again, uh, Mr. Chun. Uh, upsize, you wussy. I added the you part because he's talking to me. Yeah, I know I need to upsize, dude. I need, I'm just, I'm not the same. I'm not a man like you are, okay? I just ain't. I'm here fishing my dirty jig, finesse swim jig. I fish that bitch. Upsize and what? The, uh, my swim jig. Uh, he, 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 he's making fun of a man's size of his swim jig. And apparently mine is very small, which is also true. Um, let's see. <laughs> Andrew Styles. Uh, they've been blowing up on top bar like crazy the past couple of days. I've been waiting Harper's Ferry. Andrew, yeah, like... The top bar bite's really good. It's just you got to worry about your hookup ratio and you got to worry about your landing percentages with that stuff. Not discounting it. It'll probably be in the tournament, but just be mindful that when you get those smallmouth, this is my tip for you guys. If you guys haven't thrown a lot of treble hook baits, whether it's a crankbait, top bar, don't matter. The harder you pull, the harder they're going to pull back and they're going to jump. You do not want them to jump. And I personally say if they want to just tug and keep pulling on it, just let them pull. Let them pull, tire them out, get them to the net. But if you try to force them to the net early, that's when those fish are going to jump and you're going to lose them 99.9% .9 of the time. Personally, that's why I like a buzz bait uh, in some situations versus a whopper plopper. Same thing with a crankbait versus a swim jig. You know, if I hook one on a crankbait, I will lose more fish on that versus a chatterbait or a swim jig. It's the same thing with a buzz bait. If I hook them on a buzz bait versus a, a whopper plopper, in theory, I will lose less fish because of that one nice gaff hook on there. Um, and you should ask the guy in the chat. All he throws, I think, is just a freaking jackhammer and a swim jig, and he takes all of our money. So um, let's see, make sure I get all the questions there. And you just got to cover water. I think that's the biggest thing is just cover water, cover water. Make sure you hit all the spots as fast as possible. Don't spend too much time anywhere because there's tons of fish on this part of the river. Uh, okay, let me go to Instagram. Make sure I check there for any comments that we have. Uh, I got that one, the best catfish spot. What is that? Uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, where's the best catfishing spot? That was said twice. Perfect. All right, sweet. Got all the questions there. So we got over 35 people watching on Facebook and the YouTube pages, and we got over seven people watching on Instagram. So this is a really good crowd for a Sunday night. I really appreciate all you guys on a July 4th holiday weekend to be all here and uh, and hanging out. Again, if you're watching, this is your first time. This is Fishing the DMV. This is a uh, we're having a fishing report by a, a legendary fishing guy, Jeff Green of Shallow Water Fishing Adventures. Uh, he comes on every month to to just give us his knowledge as we open up his mind, like the Ark of the Covenant, to see what lurks in there in the depths and the regions. As he, uh, I don't know what he's doing. He could be making meth right now. We can't see below his chin right now. I'm um, making um, I'm making jig heads, man, for orders. Oh, you're making jig heads? Oh, dang. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pouring secret secret jig heads for orders. Is yeah. Jeff pouring baits multitasking? That's what Brandon Howe said. Yep, absolutely. He is pouring baits. He is multitasking. He's getting ready for the week. Yeah. Yeah, I got to... Um, I run out of those damn... Um, 330 seconds pretty quick, man. I, um, we lose them from time to time, and I have to make new ones. Mm. So... Yep, yeah, I'm telling you. Fishing with... Uh, Weights everything on that river, man. You go too heavy, and you're going to find out um, real quick why you should be using something lighter. Oh, especially when it's like three inches right now. It's just insane. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, oh, also, guys, let you know in the comment section down below is a link for tonight's special uh, discount uh, that Jeff is putting on. That link is already in the episode description. So go on and find that for 50% off uh, the... The, the the jig heads that I think he's pouring right now. Uh, yeah, the so finesse that's jig heads. Oh, and also, um, did we? Uh, for, did you get the other code? No, I don't think you've seen it yet. So we'll wait on that. We'll we'll, we'll wait announcing that until uh, so you get that thing all squared away. Um, okay. So link in the episode description of that. But then, like Jeff was kind of saying, just a more vague thing is uh, he's a pay, he he helps support the Patreon group. If you join Patreon, you get a discount. Of course, you get access to a ton of you know members only content. 
private Facebook group, monthly giveaways. We're only four members away from our next major milestone where I'm going to have a Patreon members only meetup. We're going to be inviting a ton of fishing guides there. It's a members only event. No one else is allowed in. If you want to come and just join and you're not a Patreon member, it will cost you, you know, probably about 80 bucks. Yeah, it, it's going to be super exclusive. So it's free to all Patreon members. It'd be food, drink, uh, a bunch of friends. Uh, so again, we just need four more members and I'll get that up. And we'll also have merch and stickers. Patreon members only stickers and merchandise will be there. So you can come pick some of that stuff up if you want. The stickers are going to be 100% free of charge. You just, if you want a sticker, you can get a sticker. I'm thinking I talked to my wife. The shirts, we will have to charge a little bit for so we don't go homeless, but it's only going to be available for you guys to buy if that's something that you want. So definitely something that's important. Um, uh, Brew Tank Outdoors says, Jeff is definitely probably making meth. Codename Tickler. Uh, that'd be funny. That'd actually be a funny name for a meth dealer is Tickle. I haven't gone to Walmart and gotten allergy medicine in a while. So there you go. I'm not, I'm not right now. Codename Ticklers. That is actually would be hilariously funny. Uh, oh, here we go. What we got a dumb date. name, right? What a stupid Ticklers? name. Who came up with the name Tickler? I mean, it's a, it's embarrassing to even tell people what the name of the bait is when they're fishing with me. Uh, probably somebody that went to Epstein's Island. If I had to, uh, if I had to hazard a guess, Tickler. That's such a goofy name. David Stottlemyer. I got a badass name right. Yes, mm. I feel good about that, guys. God damn, I got it right. David Stottlemyre, I did that by myself as an adult. Do you paint your jig heads or just plain lead? God, that Me? feels good to get. Yeah, you. No, I thought he was talking to you. I thought you were pouring jig heads right now. Yeah, I wish. If, unless it's a um, metaphor. Yeah, for... no, I, I paint them. I, I offer them uh, green pumpkin and um, and on my website, I have green pumpkin and black. Mm. So, yeah, I paint them. And we got two questions on Instagram. Uh, Adams AG17. Again, guys, if you ask a question on Instagram, I can't share it to the stream because Instagram is stupid and won't let me do that. But uh, Adams AG17, what weight jig head did he say he uses? Well, right now I'm using either a 16th ounce or a 332nd, which is a size up for, from 16th. There you go. That's it. And then and if, if you're in a little bit of um, if, if you're in some swift water, try an eighth ounce. And if that doesn't work, go to a three sixteenth. Three sixteenth, okay. And in swift water, but the eighth ounce should get down there because of how low the water is. Brandon, um, Brandon says, "What's your website?" Uh, Brandon, if you go in the EPSA description on Facebook of this video, there is a link to Jeff's website that you can just click on. And it'll take you right there. So just go into the the, the episode description, and all the stuff is right there. Uh, shallow water fishing adventures tackle is the website if you want to look that up but or just go into the episode description and you can click on it you can find his website yeah you can google it you can just google google shallow water fishing adventures it'll pop up yeah or and, just go to swfabaittackle.com yep, yep 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 and then if you want to be in the loop on like monthly discounts that we do join us on patreon you'll be in the loop if anything comes up that jeff's going to be pimping out um, and hey if, that's um, be here's available. a little um for the people that are uh if they're going to go to the website if you go there, sign up for my uh, newsletter. All you're going to get is a newsletter once once a month. I'm not selling it to some foreign country, or uh, I'm not using your website or your um, email address for uh, my own pleasure. Um, it, you, you'll just end up getting some type of uh, email once a month on sales and stuff like that. If you go there and sign up, you get 10% off automatically. The next right. question we have is from Nova Bass Assassins. Nova Bass Assassins, wow. dude. I, I absolutely, by the way, uh, I've seen some of your content. Uh, you do extremely great work, by the way, boss. Um, says, saw the legend Jeff on Saturday at a launch somewhere uh -oh. and a super nice guy. Oh, good, good. All right. You weren't that guy that, no, I'm kidding. Greg says, Jeff, how much grass are you seeing in the river with the low water conditions? Um, not much right now because I can't see the bottom with that uh, green pea looking water that's coming down the river. Is that um, coming from Pointer Rocks? 
no, it's coming up from the Shenandoah. Okay. And it's it's a it's you know it's not it's not something unheard of. It's not like um out of the ordinary. That's what happens when you get hot water. You get algae blooms. Is it as bad above Harper's Ferry? No. No. Nope. Interesting. That's interesting. Those, it's a Shenandoah um, thing. Hmm. But I, I just picture this: if you guys love those tubers, they're they're tubing right through that stuff. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Lee Wells says tons of grass coming out of Pennyfield. Huh. Pennyfield, like, the Sh Shenandoah or the Potomac? No, no, Pennyfield Lock in uh, south of Dam Two. Oh, okay, way down there. Yeah, I don't know where that grass is coming. I saw it too. I don't know where it's coming from. Obviously, it's coming off the, off the bottom, but I don't know what part of the river. Interesting. Well, clearly, it's from Pennyfield. Yeah, it's Pennyfield's fault. Exactly. Exactly. All righty, guys. Well, it is. Let me take a look at the time here. We got 918 here. So we've been going for about an hour on a Sunday. I know everybody's got, uh, and then we got Lee Wells. The lock is almost dry. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I, I think it's going to be kind of one down south there or up near Brunswick. It's going to be in the shallower areas, if I had to guess. Uh, but again, that's just me. Please, guys, as always, this is what we're going to be doing here. We're going to let this stream go for the rest of the night before I take it off, and then I polish it up and then upload it again. Like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out in the algorithm. If you could leave a review on Apple Podcasts, that really helps out. Go check us out on Patreon or check out Jeff Green at all of his handles down below. Link in the episode description to Jeff's website and includes his discount code for the 4th of July weekend summer blowout sale. Jeff, you got anything to add? Yeah, you can go to uh, swfabaittackle.com if you want to go to the website. I also have shallowwaterfishingadventures.net, which is my guide service. They're kind of like linked together. But you can go there. You can go to my Facebook page. I've started a um, YouTube. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. Um, I just put a video out. Um, it's uh, about catching um, smallmouth in um, warm, shallow water. So uh, check that out. And then I'm on Instagram too so please check it out awesome stuff like and subscribe to the channel guys we have oh monday night live tomorrow night i have the quarterly black bass advisory meeting i believe it starts at 6 p.m so monday night live is going to start right after the maryland black bass advisory board meeting is done i'm going to have i'm going to try to get back on captain steve chaconis who's also a blackboard member a black bass advisory board member to come on the show to talk about not only the board but also what's going on on the title potomac as well so that'll be coming up tomorrow so again it's it, it's just like tonight i'm hoping to start at eight but it might be pushed back a little bit so as always like subscribe to the channel help us out in the algorithm and we will see you tomorrow on fishing the dmv bye you're listening to fishing the dmv with your hosts thomas aarons and jared mounts Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.